The new 16-inch MacBook Pro with the M3 Max chip is the most powerful laptop we have ever tested. I know I said that about the MacBook Pro 16-inch with the M2 Max processor released earlier this year, but Apple has outdone itself once more with this monstrous notebook. It's easily one of the best MacBooks yet. Other than the new space black color that diminishes fingerprints, the latest MacBook Pro 16-inch is virtually identical to previous models. That means you still get a gorgeous 16-inch Liquid Retina XDR display, plenty of ports and a sleek, sturdy design. But there's a whole lot of power underneath the familiar cheeses thanks to the M3 Max processor. To be clear, the 16-inch MacBook Pro with an M3 Max chip isn't for everyone, and not just because of its lofty US$3,499 starting price. If you are a creative professional who works with 8K videos, then this beastly laptop should facilitate your workflow. Similarly, the M3 Max chip also makes this MacBook Pro a powerful gaming rig. However, if you only dabble in video editing or primarily use the best laptops for writing, the new 14-inch MacBook Pro M3 might be a better choice. Is the MacBook Pro 16-inch right for you? Watch my full review to find out. The new MacBook Pro 16-inch features the same design introduced with the MacBook Pro 14-inch and MacBook Pro 16-inch 2021. That could be a bummer if you wanted a completely new design, but I'm not complaining since I think this build hits the sweet spot of being both functional and stylish. I will discuss the new space black color shortly. Like the previous model, this notebook measures 14.01 by 9.77 by 0.66 inches and weighs 4.8 pounds, 4.7 for the M3 Pro model. While big and heavy, the MacBook Pro feels durable thanks to its sturdy squared of aluminum chassis. The lid is easy to open with one hand and has just the right amount of rigidity when you open and close it. So, its weight and size make it less portable than the MacBook Air 15-inch, the Pro feels good to hold when carrying it around. The thin bezels surrounding the 16.2-inch display allow you to see more of whatever you are watching or working on. Before you ask, yes, the notch at the top center of the display hasn't gone anywhere. That might bother some of you, but I have gotten used to the notches on these machines. On a screen this week, I rarely notice the notch. Let's talk about the new space black color. Yes, it looks incredible, but the best part is that the finish has an anodization seal that reduces fingerprints. Reduces is the operative word since you will still get fingerprints on this machine. They are just not as apparent as they would be on a silver or a space gray chassis. I probably shouldn't get as excited about a new color as I am, but I it's impressive stuff. The 16.2-inch Liquid Retina display remains as gorgeous as ever. Not only is it bright and colorful, but its 120Hz ProMotion refresh rate makes everything run smoothly, especially games. As before, this is hands down one of the best laptop displays out there. The latest trailer for Monarch Legacy of Monsters looked incredible on the 16.2-inch display. I was especially impressed by the amount of details seen on the various monsters, including including the big guy Godzilla. Most of the trailer is dark but everything appeared crisp and clear. The final shot of Godzilla roaring in a desert during the day was nice and bright thanks to the XDR display. Our lab tests confirm my experience with the 16-inch MacBook Pro's panel. When pointing our colorimeter at the screen, we found that it achieves 116.7% of the sRGB color gamut and 83.2% of the more demanding DCI-P3 color space. Color accuracy is great with the MacBook Pro 16-inch turning in a Delta E score of 0.11. These values are identical to the previous model which is awesome.
HDR brightness is also comparable to the M2 Max version hitting 1546 nits of brightness when displaying HDR content on 10% of the display and 1123 nits of 100% of the screen. Things get more interesting with non-HDR brightness. Where the M2 Max averaged 455 nits of brightness, the new MacBook Pro averaged 563 nits. That's not the advertised 600 nits of SDR brightness, but it's certainly brighter than before. How does the 16-inch MacBook Pro's display stack up against competing notebooks? The display on Apple's laptop gets brighter than both the Samsung Galaxy Book 3 Ultra and the latest Dell XPS 15 OLED. Samsung's device delivers comparable color saturation and accuracy while Dell's laptop has more saturated colors and slightly less color accuracy. The six-speaker sound system made my ears happy thanks to the rich, deep sound quality. Roaring monsters and booming explosions in the Monarch trailer sounded cinematic, with even small details coming through clearly. The detuned guitar riffs in Nevermore's Enemies of Reality sounded appropriately bassy. Overall, the laptop's speakers deliver excellent sound on podcasts, movies, and music. Port selection remains the same as the two previous 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros. You will find three Thunderbolt 4 USB C ports, an SD card slot, and an HDMI port. There's also a headphone jack and a MagSafe port. The latter is still one of my favorite features on the redesigned MacBooks released in the last couple of years. The HDMI 2.1 port supports up to 8K resolution on an external monitor at 60Hz. Conversely, you can connect to a 4K display at up to 240Hz. The M3 Pro chip can support up to two external displays and the M3 Max chip can manage up to four displays. Let's get to the juicy part, performance. While the M2 powered laptops we have reviewed certainly offered more power than their immediate predecessors, the jump wasn't as spectacular as when Apple moved away from Intel Silicon. Even if the M3 bump isn't as significant as that seminal moment, the jump from M2 to M3 is still remarkable. This is especially true for the 16-inch MacBook Pro kitted with the M3 Max chip. As expected, the new MacBook Pro had no trouble handling my everyday workflow, which usually consists of multiple open tabs. Even when I had upward of 30 open tabs with a YouTube video playing in the background, the M3 Max powered laptop never broke a switch. The MacBook Pro earns its Pro moniker when you are editing videos. To illustrate this, our video editor rendered the same 9-minute 4K video on the 16-inch MacBook Pro M3 Max laptop and an older 14-inch MacBook Pro with M1 Max. The M3 Max machine completed the task in less than 5 minutes while the M1 Max laptop had barely rendered 50% of the video during the same amount of time. Our lab tests confirmed our anecdotal evidence. On Geekbench 6, which measures CPU performance, the MacBook Pro 16-inch with M3 Max notched a single-core score of 3200 and an incredible 21711 multi-core score. For comparison, its M2 Max predecessor scored 1993 and 15173 respectively on the same test. On Geekbench 5.4, the older M1 Max notched at 1781 and 12683 on the single or multi-core tests. In short, the M3 Max is roughly 20% faster than the M2 Max and 45% faster than M1 Max. In our handbrake video transcoding test, the M3 Max driven MacBook Pro 16-inch transcoded a 6.5 GB 4K video 2080p in 2 minutes 34 seconds. That's about twice as fast as the M2 Max, which need 4 minutes and 03 seconds. On the Puget Bench Photoshop test, 
which assigns a score based on how effectively a system uses scripts to apply a series of filters and other adjustments to several high-res photographs, the MacBook Pro 16-inch M3 Max scored 1443. This test also times how long each system takes and the new laptop took 3 minutes and 29 seconds. In contrast, the M2 Max version of the laptop scored 1218 and took 3 minutes 54 seconds. The MacBook Pro 16-inch with M1 Max took 4 minutes 20 seconds and scored 877. As for the Galaxy Book 3 Ultra, it lagged far behind with a score of 822 and a time of 6 minutes 1 second. During its scary fast virtual event, Apple boosted about the M3 lineups and hence the GPU. All M3 chips now feature dynamic caching, which allocates the use of local memory in hardware in real-time and only uses the exact amount of memory needed for specific tasks. Hardware accelerated ray tracing is now possible thanks to the new M3 chip. The updated GPU also brings hardware accelerated mesh shading to Mac. This is all well and good but how does that translate to real-world use? I found that gamers like Baldur's Gate 3 and Lies of P looked exquisite on the M3 Max driven MacBook Pro 16 inch with their respective worlds rendered in stunning detail. The living environment in Baldur's Gate 3's opening with its pulsing red walls made me feel appropriately uneasy as did the corpse steering train station in Lies of P. Frame rates also consistently high on both titles, fluctuating between 70 and 130 frames per second, depending on the amount of on-screen action. Lies of P has an option to enable or disable metal effects, which is Apple's answer to Nvidia and AMD's upscaling technologies. Frame rates remained in the 130 range with metal FX enabled and around 70 to 80 with the feature disabled. Baldur's Gate 3 didn't have this option but its FPS remained high throughout. The M3 Max MacBook Pro also performed well in our lab tests. In the 3D Mark World Life Unlimited 3D performance test, the M3 Max MacBook Pro 16 inch scored 31,271 and averaged 187 frames per second. In comparison, the MacBook Pro 16 inch with M2 Max scored 13,000 and averaged 77 frames per second. That's a mighty huge boost in graphical performance. We also ran in-game benchmark for a handful of titles. Shadow of the Tomb Raider reached 118 FPS at 1922 by 1200 resolution and 47 FPS at 2K gaming. The less graphically demanding Seed Mirrors Civilization 6 ran at nearly 60 FPS across all available display resolutions. Results for the later are identical to what we saw from the M2 Max powered laptop but Shadow of the Tomb Raider's numbers see a significant increase. We don't know if dynamic caching is helping in this case but it could be the case. The excellent power gaming performance I experienced on the MacBook Pro 16-inch kitted with the M3 Max once again proves Macs are more than capable of running graphically demanding games. Games optimized for Apple Silicon such as Baldur's Gate 3 and Resident Evil Village not only look phenomenal but run like a dream. The same is also true for unoptimized games like Shadow of the Tomb Raider. If more developers make titles for Macs, Apple's platform could be as viable as Windows for gaming someday. The latest MacBook Pros come with macOS Sonoma pre-installed. As we said in our macOS Sonoma review, the current version of the operating system delivers minor but helpful features that makes your Mac better, including desktop widgets, Safari profiles, an upgraded game mode, better video conferencing, and more. Most new features offer minor cosmetic improvements such as video screensavers and animated reactions you can trigger during video calls. Other features like new widgets or the option to set up multiple profiles in Safari are pretty useful. There's also a game mode that deprioritizes background tasks and doubles Bluetooth sampling rate for controllers. 
Again, none of macOS Sonoma's new features are revolutionary. However, the smaller updates Apple has focused on this time around at greater utility for the apps you use. It also makes using macOS Sonoma a more pleasant experience. The MacBook Pro 16-inch M2 Max I reviewed earlier this year is the longest-lasting laptop we have ever reviewed, enduring for an astonishing 18 hours and 56 minutes. While the updated M3 Max driven model doesn't last as long, it still blows away most other laptops for better life. On our battery test, which involves continuous web surfing at 150 nits of screen brightness, the new MacBook Pro 16-inch lasted for 17 hours and 11 minutes. While that's nearly 2 hours less than the last model, I doubt anyone will complain about 17 hours of battery life. That's still longer than 2021's MacBook Pro 16-inch 2021 with M1 Max, which lasted for 15 hours and 31 minutes. Windows laptops like Dell XPX 15 OLED uh, while lasted 8 hours and 58 minutes and Samsung Book 3 Ultra while lasted 10 hours and 1 minute, don't even come close. How hot does the MacBook Pro 16 inch get? In our standard heat test, which involves running a heat gun over a device after streaming 15 minutes of full HD video on it, we found the hottest point to be on the underside near the center, which peaked at 81 degrees Fahrenheit. We generally consider temperatures over 95 degrees as being uncomfortable. The 16-inch MacBook Pro doesn't get close to that, so you should be able to completely comfortably keep it on your lap for extended period. At the risk of sounding redundant, the MacBook Pro 16-inch with the M3 Max is truly the most powerful Apple computer we've ever tested. As my review demonstrated, this spaced out laptop not only beats its predecessors but also smokes comparable Windows laptops. If you are a professional video editor, you will tear through projects faster than before. And if you are a gamer, the M3 Max delivers Windows PC quality gaming for titles optimized for Apple Silicon. Also, the new Space Black Finish makes an already awesome product even better. Right now, the MacBook Pro 16 inch with M3 Max is the premium Apple notebook. However, it's not for everyone. If you mostly use computers for writing, web surfing, and watching videos, you are better off with either the $1599 US dollar MacBook Pro M3 or the even cheaper $1299 US dollar MacBook Air 15 inch. Folks like myself who dabble in video editing and enjoy occasionally gaming on Macs would do well to consider the 14 or 16 inch MacBook Pro with M2 Pro, which starts at $1,999 US dollar and $2,499 US dollar respectively. While I can't recommend the MacBook Pro 16 inch with M3 Max to everyone, it's an absolute beast of a laptop that proves Apple Silicon's might. As before, Apple has set a new standard that its competitors must now live up to. If you own an old Intel MacBook Pro or even an M1 Max powered laptop and need more power, you can't do better than this. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.